Hi there, and welcome to Coffee with Phil, where our goal is to help you live a life of purpose on purpose. Walking with God sounds easy, but how many of you know it never follows the scripture prepared? In this podcast, Phil shares stories from his personal journey in the hopes that his experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will help you as you walk with God on your own journey. Grab your coffee and enjoy this practical and personal episode with your podcast host, Phil Strong. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? My name's Phil. Welcome to Coffee with Phil. And uh, I'm really looking forward to my coffee this morning as it uh, looks just absolutely delightful. Uh, Today, I sit in my office at home looking out across the foggy Waikato morning, wondering if I really want to go outside. Uh, But I've got a big day today, so let's get this done first, and we'll get into the day. Today, I want to speak about something very practical that I referred to recently. Uh, It's a book that I wrote called Kids and Money. Now, let me just uh, let me just suggest to you that there's a real good reason why you'd want to listen to this podcast today, this short podcast. I'm going to give you some mind-bending principles to think about that will relate to your circumstances. I'm going to weave faith into those mind-bending principles thoughts that you're going to receive this morning uh, for free. You're welcome. Uh, And I'm going to refer to the book. So uh, if you want to check out more about the book, just go to philstrong.com and you can find out more about that. This book, Kids and Money, came about, I spent a long time uh, of my life uh, traveling and speaking to audiences all across New Zealand, uh, a couple of times overseas, but mostly in New Zealand, teaching people about money. Uh, These would be financial seminars, I worked with people one-on-one in a business that I owned, and I spent a lot of time helping people with their finances, and it's something I really enjoyed. But often, I'd come across a circumstance where uh, parents were just pulling their hair out because kids were treating them like a money machine, or kids were not appreciating uh, the finer things that they were blessed with in life, or there was just a mindset of poverty in the home that was uh, just being passed on from generation to generation to generation. And so I set about to start this project, uh, this book that I called Kids and Money, How to Raise a Financially Savvy Generation. In my travels, I'd been to Whangarei several times, always had a blast there, got some amazing stories and some crazy stories uh, of one time I was there. Uh, But anyway, we won't go into that today. But I I met this woman who would always attend the seminar. She'd always sit in the front row. She was always just on the edge of her seat, loving it. And uh, I came to know her, and her name's Amanda. And she became a friend, her and her husband of the time. And one time, uh, she invited me home to their place for lunch uh, while I was staying in town, and I went and her and Rob, uh, and they made me tomato sandwiches, I remember. We're sitting at the farm table in the middle of the kitchen, and uh, we started to talk about how we might help families with money. And at that conversation, the idea for this book birthed. Now, why am I telling you that? Well, sometimes you just need to go and have a tomato sandwich with someone. You need to sit down, and as you talk, you find a shared passion. And as you find a shared passion, uh, what I want to suggest to you is that you learn to recognize the prompting of the Holy Spirit in a situation. Now, Amanda is a spiritual person, but not a Christian person. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't move in conversations. I can point you to half a dozen examples in the Bible where God anointed a conversation for his purposes, uh, and it wasn't in a church. So so th- that's my first challenge to you, is, is to look around you and think, what's my passion? What's burning in me? How am I going to um, serve this need that other people have that's a passion God's given me? And who around me might help me with that? Or if you look at it a different way, perhaps a better way, is who might I serve as I'm seeking to achieve this? And so this idea came of this book called Kids and Money. I had not not long previously read uh, a book that uh, the title escapes me, but it was written by Robert Kiyosaki uh, and Donald Trump, 
Actually, it's called Why We Want You to Be Rich. That's the name of the book. How's that for a title? No wonder I plucked it off the shelf. Um, But in that book, they both wrote their own chapters. And I found it really intriguing to read the book with two different perspectives and two different tones and two different contexts or experiences coming through. And I learned a lot. And so I proposed to Amanda that we might do the same for this book. Let's keep our own voice, but let's work together to make sure this book hits the mark. And we brainstormed uh, uh, 10 different chapter topics, which you can see in the book there, you know, like why should kids get pocket money and how do you cop- stop kids spending and how do you do this as a family? All those kind of topics. We brainstormed them. And then I would write my chapter and Amanda would write her chapter. And so as you read the book, you get two different views, two different voices. And, and here's the thought for you on that. When you do your job, when you find your passion, Do not give away your voice. Don't lose who God made you to be. Don't lose that spark and that passion inside you that created you uh, uniquely for the assignment that God's given you. So so that's really how the book came about. And what I want to do today is I just want to challenge you in three different areas. And uh, some of it will be relevant more to parents, but uh, uh, certainly relevant to everybody, but more relevant to parents. But some of it will be very challenging for you. And and so I hope that you um, step out of your comfort zone and enjoy what I'm about to share with you. Let's get into it. Well, let's get into it. <clears throat> I hope you're enjoying your coffee because I certainly am. Let's get into this. Why is it really important that we should teach our kids about money? Why is it important for you to sort yourself out and get your finances in order? What's the big why? At the beginning of this book, I quote a proverb. I used to quote it all the time as I traveled the country, and I would call it a proverb of the days of old. And it says this, a wise man leaves a legacy for his children's children. Now, what I didn't say in the public seminars, but many people recognize, but that that comes from Proverbs. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs in the Bible, chapter 13 and verse 22. You see, in the Hebrew culture, uh, uh, the ability to leave an inheritance, not just for your children, but your grandchildren, was a sign of God's blessing on your life. And how did you access God's blessing? Through God's wisdom. And so what we must take responsibility for is learning God's principles when it comes to finances, and we must pass them on as an inheritance. So what I would say is that if you want to be someone who is blessed by God, you want to learn God's principles for finances. And uh, that's not the purpose of this podcast, but what marks you as a wise person, is your ability to pass that wisdom on, not just to your children, but to your grandchildren. So when I talk about an inheritance or a legacy, I'm talking about the disciplines and principles and wisdom of God's kingdom rules for finances that you would pass on to your children, to those that you influence. There's a quote on page 24 of the book, that uh, still challenges me. It says, the communities we want our children to be a part of in the future come from what we build inside them today. And friends, that's our responsibility to raise up people. And, And what I say in the book is that kids learn by watching. You know, if I wanted to understand what your values were in your finances or in your family, I would simply look to your behavior because your behavior demonstrates what's important to you. Now, children learn by osmosis. They learn by watching. They don't just want you to tell them what to do. They want you to show them what to do. And and so as parents, as leaders, aunties and uncles, grandparents, friends of the family, we've got to role model healthy financial habits. Money must not be scary. It must not be an idol. It must be not be something that we fear. It must, must not be something that we talk about in a position of lack or um, poverty. We've got a role model, healthy mindset, healthy discussions, healthy concepts, and most importantly, healthy behaviors. You know, if your children see you prioritizing generosity as a discipline and you don't hide it from them, 
but you talk to them about how you're blessing your neighbor or how you're giving your tithe to a church or how you're sowing into God's kingdom through mission work or other charitable efforts, if you invite them to participate into that, uh, in that, then you are role modeling healthy financial habits. The second thing is, uh, I say this all the time uh, with regards to money and families, but 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 money should be an open discussion. It means you should talk about it. I don't necessarily think you should sit down and show your children your budget, but you should talk about having a budget and what's in it. I think you should talk about financial financial concepts at the dining room table. What does that mean? Yes, you should actually sit together and have a meal together. These are all disciplines that will role model healthy financial concepts. I, I always love the idea of planning um, goals, especially holidays around the dining room table, talking about where we're going, talking about what we want to do, talking about how we might prepare ourselves to get there. So sharing the goals and sharing the decisions. And the final encouragement that I always used to suggest uh, families do to help their kids learn about money in a role modeling sense is to send the kids off to buy the groceries, give them a list and give them just enough cash, that's right, don't give them your credit card, and send them off and help them to understand that there's different ways you can spend money. You're not just chucking things in the trolley because of the color of the logo or because there's an influencer on YouTube that might have suggested it. You're thinking wisely about how you spend your money and you're also learning that money only can be only spent once. It doesn't last forever. And if you buy the bigger box of Cocoa Pops, you might not be able to afford the butter or jam for your toast. So these are just examples. But but what are you going to do about that? What are you going to think about? How are you making wise decisions? Maybe this is an opportunity for you to think about, am I really living my life in the best way, in the most disciplined way, according to God's principles for finances? And uh, folks, as I'm challenging you on that, I'm sitting here uh, gazing into my empty coffee cup, and uh, I am challenging myself on that as well. So let's, let's challenge ourselves together, because what I want to talk about next is needs and wants. Needs and wants is a very interesting conversation. It's a concept that I started speaking about almost 25 years ago. And and most people get it wrong. Most people think that everything that they want is something that they need. And this is where it gets messed up. Uh, Later in life, when I was coaching people to clear debts, pay off mortgages, and become uh, financially secure, I used to help people to uh, articulate the difference between a need and a want and understand the difference in their family. And when you do this, you can then role model that to those people in your family, those around you. But do you ever wonder why your kids treat you like a money machine? Do you ever wonder why they constantly got their hand out expecting things? It's because your kids, and maybe even you, haven't learned the difference between a need and a want. We've got to understand they're very, very different. And so here's what I'd say to you. If you don't plan what is important to you as determined by your values, you'll always experience frustration. You see, the understanding is that our needs are what's most important to us, what we need to survive. Our wants are the luxuries, the the things on top, but all those things are driven by what we value, what's important to us. I always used to say, you know, why does one family spend $15,000 a school term to send their child off for education when another family, perhaps even their neighbor, would be happy to send their child down to the public school and pay $147 for a few fees? What's the difference? Well, there's a different value in education, and it doesn't make one right and one wrong. It's about values. And and if your kids don't understand, if your family doesn't get the memo that values drive how we choose to spend our money, then they're going to always have their hand out. They always think that what they want, they need. And they're never, ever going to be satisfied. So, so one of the problems 
uh, in a family financial situation is really starting to articulate where is the line we're going to draw in the sand? How are we going to control ourselves in order that we might have some discipline and then have the ability, the surplus, to create a life that we really enjoy? Because if you go throwing money at everything that catches your attention, you will never achieve your long-term goals. And that's my final point in this section. Behaviour like this, running from shiny thing to shiny thing, uh, always ne- saying that you need what in fact you want, this is, an, this is evidence to me of a lack of clear and powerful goals. Clear and powerful goals are what compel us to make good decisions, to make sacrifice, to distinguish between needs and wants, to prune back our expectations in line with our priorities or our values, clear, powerful goals. Now, there's a very powerful section in the book, and I'm not going to get into it, but if you're someone who really wants to invest in your children, then you'll want to read the chapter on how to help your kids get ahead through the power of goals, and both myself and Amanda write on the subject, as I shared with you earlier, but we take very different perspectives on it. And when we were editing the book, I was very challenged to think that we might present such, uh, not contrasting, but certainly um, different perspectives. But then I, I realized that by doing that, our book was going to cater to a much, much wider audience and, and help people to, to bring themselves into a place of alignment with what was inside them. And that was what was most important, not just uh, the book sounding like me. So uh, you know, if, if, if you want to help your family and, and indeed yourself deal with the issue of what is a need, what is a want, how do I have clear and powerful goals, then this book is for you. And look, I've got a confession to you. I always figured that one of the ways I could get to the parents was through the kids. So running sessions in schools was always uh, fun for me because uh, parents would come along and they would they would get challenged by the stuff I was teaching the kids and they'd be like, why did we never get taught this? Um, so, so, you know, perhaps the best way you could fix yourself was being motivated to help your children or your grandchildren or your nieces and your nephews. And I really do encourage you in that. In this final section, uh, and I promise you this is really where the gold is for today, I want to refer to uh, a small section I wrote that starts on page 139 of the book. If you've got it, you'll find it there. The heading is Staying the Course Even When It's Windy. And I tell a story of uh, my time that I spent sailing with my dad when I was um, in my late teens, my dad was looking for some kind of outlet hobby to get him away from work, and he bought a trailer sailor, and we would take it into the Tauranga Harbour, and we would sail together, and I would watch my dad enjoy the the feel of the wind on his face and and the sun as we uh, as he set the course, the sail. Uh, to 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 enjoy the fresh air and and the and the sound of the ocean, and uh, it's a it's a wonderful memory I have, but it's also a great analogy because life throws circumstances at us that don't always go the way we hope, and in that uh, I would suggest to you that your financial journey will not always be easy, and as someone who's been around the sun a few times and had a few. Uh, highs and lows, I can tell you that life does come in seasons. And uh, this is clearly the way God designed the world. Uh, He said uh, after Noah and the flood, he said these things will remain uh, summer and winter and sowing and harvest. So the seasons come in life. We have good times and we also have some bad times. But here's a problem when the bad times come. If we don't have resilience, dedication, and commitment as part of our disciplines, then we either get knocked over, we fall over, or we just lie down and quit. 
And uh, I was speaking uh, at a we were at a I was at a board meeting last night for a school, and we were speaking about resilience because it's one of the school's values, and we agreed around the board table that part of learning resilience is in fact teaching children to overcome challenges through having faith in God in order that they could move toward their personal goals. And I remember years ago having a conversation with a a friend of mine, she was a teacher at the time, and she said that, you know, the problem with life these days is we don't allow our kids to fail. We don't let them learn through hard times that come through failure, and we don't teach them to have the personal resolve and strength to get up and do things again. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to our finances. This is what I mean by staying the course, even when it's windy. Yeah, I remember being on the yacht, and the wind would come up, and we would we would be battered off course, and and Dad would have to rethink. Okay, well, how are we going to get there? And uh, and sometimes you've got to change course in the short term, in order to be able to reach your long-term destination. Now, if you know anything about sailing, or perhaps even if you've just watched like the America's Cup on the telly, you'll know that when they go against the wind, they spend a lot more time going in different directions in short bursts, and it's called tacking. They'll tack against the wind one way to get the wind on the sail, to get the forward momentum for the boat. Then they'll tack back the other way to to um to ensure that they they don't get too far from the destination, but that they make progress. Now this is a brilliant analogy for finances because when challenges come, when you've got hard times or tough times, or you know, speaking to a guy yesterday, we'd say, man, the power bill is so high at the moment, and the cost of food is so high, but incomes haven't risen. And this is an example of a tough, challenging season where we have to think about what is the destination, but maybe do I need to change course? Do I need to tack? Do I need to go left against the wind? Uh, well, that's port, obviously, if you're on a boat. Uh, and, and how do I get progress even though the wind is beating against me? And and this is what I would encourage all of us to think about. And 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 firstly, because the topic is kids and money, let me just say this. Please do not pack your kids in cotton wool, protecting them in your best motivation and yet ruining them by not allowing them to get tough and grow up and have some backbone. Uh, I hope I said that clear enough for you. So allow your kids to have challenges. Allow your kids to even fail, fall over, scrape their knee, crash their car, and then support them as they work through that challenge and come out the other side. If you keep rescuing your kids, if you keep wrapping them in cotton wool, all you're going to end up with is a 40-year-old baby that wants to stay at home or run to mummy every time life gets tough. And if that's the situation you want, then I think you're failing as a parent. Enough said there. But what about you? How's your finances going? Are you finding it challenging? Are you finding life buffeting you with the wind? Well, maybe you need to think about the principle of tacking, going a different course in the short term, tacking again and heading back the other way against the wind to make progress. Short bursts, of different activity in order to help you get to the destination. You know, I had a very tough season years ago through the global financial crisis of 2008 where I was uh, I was battered and I had to constantly think of different things I could do just to survive and and pay off the debts and 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 put food in the cupboards and and it wasn't a season that lasted forever. Thank the Lord for that. But it was a very very different season for me. And so I would encourage you to to perhaps press into God and say, is this a season where you want me to tack to the port or to the starboard? What is it that you're trying to reveal for me to discover in this challenging season? Because, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't want you to be staying still. He certainly doesn't want your boat to sink. And he doesn't want you to lose hope. So in all things, in all challenges, in all struggles, let's not lose 
hope because if we lose hope we're just going to fall off the boat and drown and I don't want that for any of us. So look, today was a really different but practical session, uh, Kids and Money. Again, you can uh, just read more about that book on my website, philstrong.com. It's easy for you to find. There is a website, uh, kidsandmoneybook.com. Uh, I don't even know if it's up to date. I haven't looked at it for so long. Uh, but there would be some videos on there if you could find that website also. As I close today, I really want you to reflect on uh, three things. So firstly, what am I role modeling to those around me? How is my behavior and the demonstration of my values through my behavior, how is that helping people around me? You are an influence. Your life is a message. People are watching you. The second thing I'd love for you to challenge yourself on is the difference between needs and wants. Am I prioritizing those things that are essential, my needs, and am I putting to the side those things that are wants? Do not think that everything you want is a need. And this is evidenced by the lack of clear and powerful goals. So perhaps you need to sit down and say, what's important to me and what would I really like to achieve over the next three years? That's a good conversation for you to have. And finally, think about how you can stay the course if it's windy. If you're challenged in finances, if you're really going up against it, then ask the Lord to reveal different strategies, different directions, different ways that you can reach your desired destination. Because I believe that, uh, well, look, just simply the, the story of Jesus in the boat with the disciples should be an encouragement to some of you. He's in the boat. He has the ability to bring calm to your storm, but he wants you to have faith while you are in the boat, uh, knowing that he's there with you. And I hope that helps you. Hey, look, I'm going to sign off here. Uh, Phil Strong, Coffee with Phil, been another great time to spend with you. Uh, please make sure you're subscribing to the podcast so that you get it in each week in your uh, podcast app of choice. And please share this with someone. Who do you know that would be really encouraged by this message that we've done today, this topic of conversation of kids and money? Well, you have a fantastic day wherever you are. I hope you have a really good coffee today, as I'm about to as well. And I'll see you all soon. Take care.